it's on autopilot for the most part. And then, and then you become conscious of something and then you do it, right? So that's what that experiment is talking about. Now, if you're interested in a topic. Throwing your headphones on. Before you sort of launch into your spiel, I'm not in agreement with yeah. uh, what Eli is about to say. I don't think Krishna is either, but carry on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why are you destroying my point before I even put no, it out I'm there? Just, Hear me just, out, I'm lady. taking myself out of the equation. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem like a sort of... Folks, you know, this is me. Folks, listen, this is me. I am saying this. This is not part of the team. The ladies are not claiming this. I am claiming this. Yeah, I am claiming this. Exactly. So if you have a problem with it, come attack me. <laughs> Did I just say that? <laughs> come attack me, all right? I'll leave my address. I'll right, leave my address yeah, in the description. I'm just saying it's a different opposing views. <laughs> all right. So I'm saying there is no fear. I'll still say it. I'm not stepping aside from that. I'm saying we are free will less. <laughs> that's the word we do not control anything basically and i'm saying the reason why we say that is because we think there's a self to have control in the first place we attribute the concept of free will to a certain self most people say the self is an illusion and i'm saying if we are going to approach this from a subjective perspective so now i want you and anyone listening to this i want you to just pause for a second and just try to stop your thoughts Oh, after this recording, just for five minutes, just sit down, set an alarm and try to stop your thoughts. Try to block anything at all that tries to come inside your mind. Just anything. Stop your thoughts. Just let it go numb. And you would find out that you can't stop it for five minutes. You'd even be shocked you can't stop your thoughts for just 15 seconds. Can you? Yeah. Can you stop your thoughts yeah. for 15 seconds? You, for 15 seconds, you would yes. literally be thinking about nothing. I Are you sure about this? Money. I will cash up you money. You can stop like yes. blank. Yo, I'm yet to behold that. You know, because I think even with meditation, meditation isn't Haven't about clearing your it. thoughts. Meditation is about thinking of just one thing. Because everyone mostly has a monkey mind. Your mind is just gibbering, thinking about what you're going to do, thinking about what That's you're going to eat, who you're with, how it is. Listen, with meditation... <laughs> Okay, my mind. Okay, well, I'm saying with meditation, meditation is simply taking one particular thing and focusing on that thing. That's no. meditation. And no. with meditation, okay. even that, we are thinking of one. Thing. No, we, that that is the that is the first me. step of meditation. That's where it starts. <laughs> That's where it starts. So if you tell yeah. people, "Hey, in order to meditate, what you need to do is clear your mind," they're gonna stop. They're not going to be able to because that's the problem is the monkey mind. So you tell them here, take this mantra and focus on this mantra. And when your mind wanders, you bring it back. It's an exercise. It literally changes your thoughts. This thought exercise, which is what meditation is, you do it enough times and they've shown there's research. It says that you can literally change the structure of your prefrontal cortex you can reshape it you can <laughs> it's a, a <laughs> neuroplasticity you can rechange your mind so eventually eventually with the exercise of practice the first step is okay i'm going to give my brain this thing to focus on hold this okay instead of just jumping from one thing to another hold this and then your brain tries to jump you bring it back it tries to jump do that for six months and i've been meditating for a couple of years now but you do that for six months and all of a sudden you find that those thoughts don't interject anymore and the next thing you know all you have is just your mantra then the next step after that you start to find you don't even need the mantra yeah and then you're just sitting there and it's fucking silence and it is the most <laughs> blissful just right then, just there, I like mm. blanked. And I and I did it intentionally. 
it becomes okay, the most but, blissful. But, but and then all of a sudden you're just place. going through your day and there's no noise. But it's an exercise. It's not a default setting, right? Which is what you're talking about. What you're expressing is like a human mind on its default setting. And I'll agree with you on that. But if you haven't actually practiced the exercise, the art of meditation, you cannot say what you're saying applies yeah. to everybody. All right. But do you agree there's a You cannot a speak on it, Eli, not, not because thinking. I'm telling you something. We can revisit this conversation in six months. I know that you don't meditate. I know you don't meditate because of what is coming out of your mouth right now. So if you meditate, sit for six months and practice every day. I meditate. I get up in the morning at six and I meditate for two to three hours in the morning. So I know what I'm talking about. But until you have put in the work, you're telling me I also paint. Okay. You cannot paint on the skill and level that I can. I know this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I know this. So if you say to me, it is impossible to paint a photorealistic painting, right? You're saying it's impossible because the human hand can't do that. A human mind cannot recreate an image to the point where you cannot distinguish it from a picture. You're setting the limitations because that's something you cannot do. But there are artists out there that mm -hmm. are better, infinitely better than I am. And I think I'm a pretty good artist who can paint pictures where you look at it and you're like, is that a photo or is that a painting? It doesn't even cross your mind that it's a painting until the artist like shows you, no, I sat here and I drew this. Okay. They put in the work. They put in the time, energy, and effort to, to get themselves from a default setting where most human beings are to where they can do things that a machine can do, right? When you meditate, right, how does it feel? Are your thoughts completely shut down? Like, do you not think of, do you not see anything? Like, do you not see any mental images? Thoughts produce mental images. They produce a mental verbal um Your mind could also produce mental labels, you know, maybe audio like sound so whilst you're like in the state of meditation you, you could see maybe a faint picture of maybe a little light even with that little light it's your thought process but and i'm asking if i haven't tried it okay but could you do you actually feel nothing what you said about five minutes ago was can you clear your thoughts for 15 yeah. seconds at least now you're trying to now change the definition or at least establish how do you define thought what you're attempting to say is that it's not thoughts just in word if you're yeah. visualizing something that is also a thought and what my response to that is for at least yeah. a minute i can sit in the nothingness in my mind without seeing without any visuals right because you're absolutely right even a visual occasionally i will see you know a blue light or some light or whatever right so those can be like visual thoughts yeah. which is basically what you're saying yeah. right but i guarantee you continuing down the path that i'm on in five years yeah. those will become that less frequent you get what i mean so it's an exercise yeah, yeah. So, so like you said it's an I, exercise imagine like i've been working out yeah and you're like okay joe can you bench press like 200 or 100 pounds like because you can't do it that doesn't mean that i can and i'm saying yeah for the last couple of years i've been working towards being able to do this thing and then your next thought process is okay well do your arms shake while you're lifting well hell yeah because i'm in the practice of doing this i haven't been doing this <laughs> since birth right and so occasionally there will be some weakness there right or whatever you want to yeah. call it but if i continue to bench this there's going to come a time when that hundred pounds will be nothing for me and i'll be able to bench 300 pounds easy right so that's what i'm saying i agree with that <laughs> i agree with that analogy that was rather, rather interesting and i come <laughs> krishna is in supporting me really i mean <laughs> it is your krishna. Part, so uh, yeah, i something. don't know the context where you're coming from so why meddling yeah. is something you don't know about right, right? I'm just an observer. I'm having fun. So the first bit about uh, me not being able to stop our thoughts, right? We, you can't stop your thoughts forever. Okay, <laughs> let, let me just back down <laughs> a notch. Okay, so can't stop your thoughts. And that could be up for debates according to the meditators. So not only can you not stop your thoughts to an extent, now let me just add that, but you also know you have absolutely no idea what your next that thought is, is going to be, right? 
you think you do but you don't like you literally do not have any idea what your next thoughts will be it feels like you do but you don't and i'd like to hear what krishna has to say about that do you think you know what your next thought is going to be about if when you're maybe in a uh, a process of thinking and you're just going here and you're like let me think about this next i cannot predict them like i can't foresee them but how are you trying to join that and make it a case for determinism just because i can't predict it or foresee it is it equivalent to me not having free will is that what you're saying i mean like i'm saying your thoughts for all your actions so if you are not in control of your thoughts then you don't have control over your actions that could apply to the everyday man who's operating quote on quote from a default right. setting so yeah it could be yes if anyone is listening here is a random thought for you pink banana red elephant white rainbow you know these are just thoughts these are just words blah 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 but when i said them your mind like interpreted them i'm sure you had a visual image of what i just said didn't you like when i said pink banana your mind somewhere in your mind was like pink banana and not only did you visualize these words but your mind also had associations with these words somewhere in your mind was like wait bananas are in pink you might not be aware of them but they happen to you you think you thought them out you think you will them but you didn't will these thoughts <laughs> i put those thoughts inside you i want to i want to say this and sound as basic as possible i don't want to sound too complicated so like i'm saying your thoughts are as a result of external stimuli you don't will your thoughts it's just like how you don't beat your heart or you don't take care of the signals of your immune system or any other bodily function you know it's a conflict between voluntary actions and involuntary actions for this particular argument you know in 1983 there was this experiment performed by Benjamin Lebet right and he he took a volunteer and he had an experiment done he added a motor cortex to the volunteer and had him do a specific action but he would say the action and the person while doing the action will say that he is doing the action before he actually does it and the moment he says maybe a uh, flick or wrist the motor cortex would respond before the wrist was actually being flicked and this is actually proven that your thoughts take control right. by your actions before you actually take them like someone would say i have free will i can actually bend my finger i can decide to go take a walk but what they don't realize is a thought is arising at the same time they are taking these actions and that thought which you do not control because they are coming from a special nowhere no one knows anything about because you don't will thoughts thoughts happen to you we are like a vessel where things happen to us our very existence is what we do and what happens to us and it's mostly what happens to us because what happens to us is what we do we are just following the line this is like it's trippy to me it's trippy they were able to Actually. gauge and guess i think it was a full like 5 seconds or so before the the subject actually responded how the subject was going to respond because the brain fired first before the individual was even conscious of their own choice yeah. now that basically was why i said earlier in the podcast was it's free won't right because your brain does a thing and then most yeah. people react to the thing right so the brain already tells you this is your action this is what we're going to do to in this situation right it's on autopilot for the most part and then and then you become conscious of something and then you do it right so that's what that experiment is talking about now if you're interested in a topic there's a great courses on free will and determinism it's called the great debates free will and determinism and they actually talk about that and they kind of bounce back between the two uh schools of thought and then you can read that or listen to that and form your own conclusions but yeah. what one of the um thinkers said or neurologist said or ph- philosopher said was that between your mind firing a reaction which is what Eli is talking about and then you're responding there is a split second and that's what i was talking about if you can pause your reactions yeah. it's called free won't right so the brain does its thing most people just react to whatever the brain has like essentially determined that they how they will react but if with practice with meditation with you know pausing yeah. to you know reflect there is a split second there's just a a very small window for you to exercise limited free will but like krishna said it's not a default setting you're not born with that you have to learn exercise practice how to do that so what 
Eli is talking about is as far as like the majority of humans, their default setting is set where you're just operating on autopilot. Stuff is happening externally. And I will agree with him on that. Stuff is happening externally. You're sitting there and all of a sudden a thought pops in. And then there's another thought yeah. that kind of trains. So he said pink banana. He put the idea of pink banana in your head. No way were you able to stop. Well, I was because I knew what he was doing. But... <laughs> But most people, when they hear a pink banana, they immediately envision a pink banana. He put that thought in your head and the visual. But because I knew what he was doing, the moment I heard him say that, I shifted to my mantra and I was like, hurry, 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 hurry. And I, that's what I was echoing to stop my mind from visualizing the pink banana, which is what he wanted me to do. But it was, it was literally like, I had to act quickly, okay? And it's not, you know, <laughs> like for the majority of people who listen to it, he said pink banana. The image basically forced itself into your mind's eye and you saw it. And then depending on how much control, and I quote, controlling quotes, that pink banana visual probably turned into, wait, banana pink, and then that turned into, well, what would a pink, you know, and it just spiraled. And before you know, it, you're not even listening to what he was talking about. And you're <laughs> off on some random tangent. That is the monkey mind that Eli is talking about. And that is the fault setting of most human beings.